kids, welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry Boy. Uh, what's going on, Larry? <laughs> and I'm Alfred, Larry Boy's faithful butler. And we're here to answer your questions. Hey, wait a minute, that's my line. Don't worry, frail, helpless tomato. We've got everything under control. Frail? Help? Larry, what are you up to? Uh, do you even have a letter? Today we have a text message from Libby. A text message? It's the latest thing. Cool, huh? Guys, uh, that's enough now. Uh, can we just stick with the script? Please, sir, stand aside. We don't want innocent bystanders getting hurt. <laughs> ah! Our text message comes from Libby Forcucci from Stockbridge, Massachusetts. And Libby writes, Dear Larry Boy, I just love watching you help people escape fibs and rumors. Don't mention it, Libby. All part of being a superhero. But I've got something in my house I just can't escape. And now I need your help. I really love playing video games. Sometimes all I can think about is playing, even when I'm supposed to be doing my homework or cleaning up my room. I'll look over to that controller and I can't help picking it up and playing. What should I do? Well, Libby, first of all, I'm really impressed that you were able to type out that really long message using those tiny little buttons. And secondly, it sounds like you're having a problem with temptation. Temptation? What's that? Well, simply put, temptation is the desire to have or do something that you know you should avoid, or the act of influencing by exciting hope. He means it's when you want to do something that you probably shouldn't do. Thank you, innocent bystander. <laughs> And it just so happens that we have prepared a story of adventure and mayhem that addresses this self-same dilemma. Uh, that means we have an exciting show that just might help you. Roll film. Remember, kid, with great chocolate comes great responsibility. This box cost me 10 bucks, but it's worth every penny. Uh, Master Larry, you know what happens when you eat too much chocolate. It's not a big deal, Alfred. Well, you're right. A little chocolate isn't a big deal. No worries, Alfred. See you back in the Larry cave. Larry boy, over and out. Ah. Hold on. Let me save. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, um... This is Petunia Rhubarb, reporting from Bumbleyburg Park, where preparations are underway for the city's gala tricentennial celebration. But as the city gets ready to celebrate its 300th birthday, something very odd has been discovered which has authorities concerned. 
The statue of Bumbleberg's founder, Obadiah Bumbley, has been mysteriously wrapped in what appears to be a giant spider web. And one such concerned authority would be none other than the mayor of Bumbleberg herself, Mayor Blueberry. Oh, hello. I was not expecting you. Mayor Blueberry, do you expect this recent vandalism to have an impact on the upcoming celebration? Evans, no. Everything is organized and well under control. I'm not letting a few silly cobwebs get in the way of our 300th birthday. Hey! Try something a little more delicate. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> we've got a great team here. <laughs> Rest assured that your Bumbleberg civil servants have everything under control. Thank you, Mayor. More as the story develops. This is Petunia Rhubarb, live at Bumbleberg Park. Well under control, indeed. Once I'm finished with them, I'll be the one in control. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Curly, you've returned. Come, tell me what you've learned. <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to my Bananarama extravaganza. I'm your host, the top banana, and... Whoa, whoops! <laughs> it is it! I slipped on my own peel! <laughs> oh, 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 Uh, Master Letty, welcome back. I don't feel so good. Indeed. Uh, you do appear to be a bit pale. Excuse me. Yeah, I love this World Wide Web thing you got going. Very high tech. Oh, for the moment, it's only my Bumbleberg Wide Web. But be patient. First Bumbleberg, then the world. So, uh, what you got? Paralyzer beams, magnetic webbing, an army of little radioactive robot spiders? Silly worm, that's not the way I operate. I'm temptation. I'll simply divide and conquer. No one can stand up to me on their own. Oh, yeah, right. Very smooth. Tell me then, what have you scouted out for me? Who's in charge? Which pillars need removal? Every town needs three key elements to operate. One, organization. You got Mayor Blueberry, the city's duly elected leader. She runs the city, keeps everything moving like a well-oiled machine. And her weakness? Vanity. She wants to be beautiful. Perfect. Two, communication. Meet Petunia Rhubarb, television news reporter. Bumblebag looks to her to find out what's going on. <laughs> If she's not on the air, folks might as well just read the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I've got news for her. What's her secret weakness? Video games. She's good at them, too. And she'd be happy to play them all day long. Excellent. I think I might be able to arrange something. Tree, protection. And that comes courtesy of Larry Boy. Superhero. There's nothing there. Actually, I'm still kind of working on that one, boss. <laughs> well, then kind of work a little harder. I need to know about their defender if we want to take him out. Meanwhile, I believe I'll pay a visit to her honor the mayor. I warned you, Master Laddie. This is the direct result of your overindulgence in chocolates. They give me energy. They also give you a bellyache and a sugar crash. Something evil is afoot in Bumbleberg, and you're going to need all your superhero faculties to battle it. I need to lie down. Got any super strength tummy seltzers? Ugh. How much chocolate did you eat? Too much. Excuse me. What you need, Master Larry, is to eschew chocolate. What's a shoe? Not much. What's a shoe with you? <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> oh, I just.
best. Actually, eschew means to avoid, to renounce, to give up. I can't give up chocolate. I love chocolate. Well, then I'll help you. You can't be the superhero God wants you to be if you continue this overindulgence. Oh, yeah. Maybe you're right, Alfred. What do we do? Well, we'll design a program together. A lot more exercise and a lot less chocolate. Knock, knock. Who's there? Just a pretty little apple with some time to spare. Open up. Apple who? A harmless little kitty with her eye on you. Open up that door and let me in. Don't you worry about those hairs on your chinny chin chin. I'm not preaching moderation. Knock, knock. What's your name? Temptation. Oh no. Temptation. Look out! Temptation! No, no, Jean Claude, I'm extremely busy. I said, who let you in? I was hoping you would. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. A little faster now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Come on now. No pain, no gain. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. No energy. Me, chocolate. To the bench press. Look, I'm very busy right now. I've got a million things to organize for the celebration. Why, that's exactly why I'm here. With everything you have to worry about, I thought you might need a little help with your outfit for the occasion. I'm a seamstress, you might say. What a fabulous cape. Look at those eyes and that lovely purple-blue complexion. With a little work, you could be a knockout. For sure, please. I'm not one of those vain blueberries who only thinks of our appearance. <laughs> a knockout? <laughs> Do you really think? Absolutely. Please come in. And you know, there's no harm in wanting to look your best. After all, you represent all of Bumbleburg. You owe it to your citizens to appear fabulous at all times. Well, I suppose. If you put it that way. <laughs> Oh, how lovely. That's amazing. It almost looks like you can walk right in. Oh, but you can. Go ahead. Walk right in. What a marvelous dress. I love the color. Is that crimson? It's more of a scarlet. <laughs> You've got it. You've got it. Four more. That's why I'm here. Two more. You need more oomph, Master Larry. Yeah, I'm really thirsty. No, no, more oomph. You need to give it everything you've got. A little help. Come on, Master Larry. Push. Well, Alfred, you're right. I am starting to feel better. Alfred? Knock, knock. Who's there? Just a friendly little apple with a game to share. Open up. Apple who? Just a simple little lovely with her eye on you. Open up that door and let me in. I don't care about your hairs on your chinny chin chin. I'm not preaching moderation. Knock, knock. What's your name? Temptation. Oh no. Temptation. Look out! Temptation! Hold on, Jerry. I'll be right with you. Okay, let's do some reporting. Oh, uh, can I help you? I hope so. Sometimes it's just so hard to help yourself. Huh? I have something you might be interested in. I'm sorry, but I'm on a deadline. Huge breaking story, Trison... Oh, bless your heart, you are the busy one. Don't you ever relax? Well, 
Yeah, I play my handy pod. What if I told you I have the one and only test version of Handy Pod Advanced? Handy Pod Advanced? Maybe I could come in and give you a demonstration? I don't know. I need to find out what's going on with the statue and who's responsible and... With Laser Cycle 4000. Laser Cycle 4000? Come on in. I'd love to. You know, it's so good to be able to take your mind off your work every now and again. You owe it to yourself. Well, yeah. That wouldn't be so bad, I guess. Oh, this is advanced. It looks like you can walk right in. Oh, but you can. Go ahead. Walk right in. Have fun. <laughs> you are one funny weatherman, Cliff. You're almost as goofy as Bill on sports. <laughs> I tell ya. Well, let's go live to Petunia Rhubarb with an update on the mysterious web around old Obadiah at Bumbleyburg Park. Petunia? <laughs> Petunia? You there? Uh, we seem to be having a little technical difficulty. Uh, back to you, Bill. No news is good news. Oh, Uncle Ephraim, you'd be so proud. Now the only force standing between me and my conquest of Bumbleyburg is Larry Boy. Not to worry, boss. I got the goods on him and that brainy butler of his. Two words, bananas and chocolate. Mmm, delicious. Master Letty, and this is exceedingly interesting. What? What? Apparently, these mysterious webs are nothing new. It seems they've plagued the city of Bumbleburg in the past. When? How? Why? Unfortunately, my computer database doesn't contain such old information. I believe I'll have to make a trip to the Bumbleberg Historical Society to find out more. Oh no, I've got to move fast. I'll be back shortly, Master Larry. Uh, meanwhile, I trust you won't give in to your <clears throat> temptation while I'm gone. Don't worry, Alfred. I'm stronger than temptation. I'm a superhero. <laughs> Someone named Larry Boy might need some assistance? Well, you can tell Alfred that Larry Boy's a superhero and he doesn't need any help. Oh, oh, I see. Well, let me leave my card with you, just in case. Now, where did I put those? Maybe it's under the chocolate. Did you say chocolate? Yeah, right here under the chocolate. Well, I guess it won't hurt to have the opinion of another trainer. Uh, oh, wait. You need security clearance. Oh, well, I, um... Promise not to tell anybody about my secret cave? Cross my heart. All clear. Come on in. I'll be right up. I mean, Larry Boy will be right up. I thought you'd never ask. What are we supposed to be doing? I don't know. Go ask the mayor. Where's the mayor? Where's Petunia? Ah, I've got to hurry. Nearly 300 years ago, a small band of valiant vegetables would embark on a ship they called the Cauliflower to settle an unknown land. Led by the fearless Obadiah Bumbly, they soon began establishing a primitive settlement in the wilderness of the New World. Today, we give thanks for our safe arrival on these beautiful and bountiful shores, Obadiah Bumbly. But it wasn't long before it became clear 
that something was rotten in the new settlement. Dearest Catherine, I am finding myself irresistibly drawn to a fascinating new establishment in town. It is called Appley's Funhouse. And boy, does it look like fun! <laughs> Abraham Roberts. Soon, chaos would reign in their little community. Before we get to your exercises, you don't mind if I have a little snack, do you? Uh, it gives me energy. Mm, something the matter, Dumpling? No, I just have this thing for chocolate, that's all. Oh, where are my manners? Care for a bite? Uh, uh, no, no thanks. I've been eating too much of it lately. Less chocolate, more exercise. Mm, wise plan. Oh, besides being so delicious, Chocolate is also very interesting. Did you know chocolate was invented by the Mayans thousands of years ago? The Mayans, eh? Mm-hmm. Made from the beans of the cocoa tree. B-b-b-b-beans? You know what I think would be fabulous? What if there was a museum of chocolate? You know, a place you could go to learn all about Beautiful it. Beautiful chocolate. Of course, you wouldn't have to eat any if you didn't want to. But what an education that would be. And becoming educated about food is an important part of any training program. Yeah, a museum. That'd be so educational. All work in the young settlement of Bumbleburg had come to a halt. The little town was about to fall into the hands of a single sinister citizen. Oh my goodness! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the chocolate room! Did you know that white chocolate contains no caffeine? Really? That sounds healthy. Go ahead. Just a teensy weensy taste won't hurt. Well, I suppose if it's educational. Oh, it certainly will be. Mmm. And yummy. Excellent. Now, try another one. Oh, uh, I don't think I should. I promised Alfred I would eschew chocolate. Oh, no, no, no. Chew them. You must compare the flavors to learn the differences. Right. Right. Educational. Chewing, chewing, <laughs> always <laughs> brewing. <laughs> Never stops until you're stewing. So much fun to go canoeing while your chocolate is accruing. All consuming, hair shampooing, all my victims fast subduing. Go ahead, take the plunge. <laughs> The cause of all this chaos was Ephraim Apley, a bad apple who had come over on the cauliflower determined to take over the tiny town by distracting them with play. His plan was to enslave the community with non-stop fun. It was only the timely arrival of Obadiah Bumbley that saved the little community from ruin. Ephraim Apley, thou art a scourge upon the fair face of Bumbleybird. Obadiah Bumbley. Oh, brother Obadiah, thou art so uptight. Prither, let the brethren play at the little checkers. Ephraim Apley. I have not against a bit of harmless amusement, Brother Ephraim. It is well and good to play as thou checkers on occasion. Citizens of Bumbleyburg, I beseech ye, let us turn our backs on this rotten apple and his house of overindulgence. Thou hast tried to lead us into temptation, Brother Ephraim, but we shall not follow thee. Oh, but I bumbly. Oh, yeah? Says who? Say we! Oh, wait, wait, please! Yeah. Be gone! Be gone! Be gone! Be gone. Ephraim Apley. Please. Please. And thus, Ephraim Apley and his lineage would be forced from Bumbleburg, defeated in his plot to rule the little village. Oh, my! That apple! <laughs> Master Letty? Oh, what's happened to you? Oh, no. You've fallen into a web of chocolate temptation. Now, isn't that an awful shame? You! You're Apley! 
how did you get in here? Why, your superhero friend let me in, of course. Well, if he'd known what I know, he certainly never would have. That's what they all say, but they always let me in. <laughs> I know all about you. <laughs> and of course, I know all about you too, Alfred. What? What are you doing? Alfred, poor Alfred. You've been working so hard doing all that tedious research in the library. Don't you think you deserve a little harmless amusement? Good evening, and welcome once again to my Bananarama extravaganza. Oh. Oh, oh, no, you don't. I'm not gonna fall. Oopsie, <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> that gets me every time. Yes, the banana is a comic genius. And of course, only the smartest, most tasteful people can appreciate his work. Indeed, ma'am. I've often harbored that very thought myself. <laughs> Ta ta, boys. I've got a big surprise for Bumbleberg. Now, great Uncle Ephraim, our time has come. Soon I'll control this town with that silly superhero and his butler out of the way. We need to move fast. And now to launch the final phase of my brilliant scheme. Bumbly boy will be ours. Uh, yours, yours, I mean. Everyone will be in your power. <laughs> That's better. Wait till they see what I've got in store for them. I'll spin a monument to temptation so alluring that no citizen of Bumbleburg will be able to resist. All will enter, but none will ever come out. The perfect spot. Hey, but don't we need a construction crew? How can we build a... Whoa, whoa! Whoa, mama! Up, come one, come all. You don't want to miss out on this fun and exciting opportunity. And whoopsie doozy, <laughs> I slipped on the old peel. Hurry, folks, come on down to Appley's Funhouse 2. That's right, Appley's Funhouse 2. Appley's Funhouse. Oh no, I'm stuck fast. I need help. Uh, Master Larry, you must listen. Bumbleberg is in terrible danger. They are being led into temptation. Mm, chocolate. Larry boy, Bumbleberg needs a hero. Hero? I am that. I am that hero. Oh, oh, oh no. I've fallen into a web of chocolate temptation. Alfred, I can't get out of this mess by myself. I need your help. As do I, Master Letty. Throw me a line. I'll try. Oh, what do you know? The potassium phosphate in the sports elixir must have had an adverse chemical reaction with the triglyceride compound in this web, thus working like an acid. Ha, ah, interesting. Oh, the umph has oomph. I'm terribly sorry, Master Larry. I haven't been the butler you need me to be. No need to apologize, Alfred. I completely understand, but I need your help. It seems we need each other's help to get out of temptation. I don't know what happened. I just thought I need a little bit of chocolate. Uh, Master Larry, you cannot be the superhero God wants you to be if... If all I ever think about is chocolate. I, I know that now, Alfred. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Thanks for your help, buddy. And thank you for yours. But others are still in the grip of temptation. We must help free them or Bumbleberg will be doomed. <laughs> Only skin deep. She needs help. Master Laddie! 
You can't be the mayor God wants you to be if all you think about is how you look. That is true. Bumbleyberg is in trouble. Oh, my goodness. Please, can you help me get out of here? You bet I can. my friends. Our pleasure, Your Honor. Now we need to free Petunia. The city needs to learn the news. Ladies and gentlemen, Bumbly Burgers of all ages, the fabulous Apley's Funhouse 2 is open for business. Come on in and join the fun and frolic. We got the music. Whoever enters the Funhouse stays in the Funhouse. Apley's Funhouse 2, the round-the-clock funnest place in I didn't see anything about this on the news. Come to think of it, I haven't seen anything on the news. Petunia! I don't think I can hold it off much longer! I'm on the way! Help me! How do I get out of here? There's nothing wrong with playing video games, but... You've let this video game play you! I know! I want out! Hold on! Let's find out what's going on out there! Master Larry! Jerry! Come on, folks! Hurry, hurry, hurry! It's all happening on the inside! Nothing going on out here! Hey, who's that little worm? Apprehend him, Master Larry! He's working for the apple! What are you waiting for? Come on in! <laughs> Officer! Arrest this worm! What's the charge? Accomplice to temptation with intent to lead astray! Operating a giant Macintosh without a permit. What? You can't arrest me. And resisting arrest. None of us is strong enough to fight temptation on our own. It's apple picking time. Petunia, do your thing. You got it. Larry boy. Say no more. Okay. On me in three, two, Petunia Rhubarb coming to you live from Bumbleyburg Park. A huge, monstrous apple has been sighted here in the park. Authorities are cautioning the public not, I repeat, do not go near Apley's Funhouse. Turn away from temptation. It's a trap, believe me, I know. Repeat, flee temptation. What's happening? What are they doing? All right, bad apple, the jig is up. Apple a day keeps the doctor away! <laughs> or oh, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You may be quick with the quips, but uh, an apple in the hand is worth three bushes. No? Uh, ah! I've got one shot to plug that web shooter. Uh, sorry. Whoa! Whoa! Just save us. Here. I got you covered. All citizens are clear of the funhouse. All right, everyone. Boy, 
I'll get Obadiah Bumbley if it's the last thing I do! Or is it just me? <laughs> so, how about that party? My fellow citizens. We are gathered here today to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the founding of our great city of Bumbleburg. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you our founding father, Obadiah Bumbley. Now we also have someone else to thank for delivering our town from this terrible evil. And that, of course, is our city's great superhero, Larry Boy! Why, thank you, dear, but I can't take the credit. Temptation is too strong for any one of us to handle alone. We need God's help and the help of the people around us, our friends and our family. Well put, Master Larry. You can always call on me when you need help. And as a token of our appreciation, it is my pleasure to present you, in honor of Bumbleberg's 300th birthday, this magnificent 300 pound chocolate birthday cake. Help! I'll save you a piece, a small one. All right, everyone. Go see Alfred about some cake. <laughs> Well, Ibby, I hope you liked the show, and I hope you learned something from it. I know I did. Well? What are you doing? Uh, I'm a superhero, too. Bob, it takes more than a costume to be a... No, 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 not Bob. I'm the Red Wonder. Uh, or Bobbin, uh, but I'm leaning toward Red Wonder. Uh, I have a theme song. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. Wow. Catchy. Oh, wait, uh, that's not it. Oh, you let see, me... we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. No, no, no! It all worked out! Ah, uh, shall we see if QWERTY has a verse for us today? Yeah, fast. <laughs> Keep alert and pray. Otherwise, temptation will overpower you. For though the spirit is willing enough, the body is weak. Matthew 26, 41. So you see, Libby, you need to ask God to help you with the things that keep you from being the kid he wants you to be. Letty boy had a weakness for chocolate. That's why I needed the help of the good friends that God gave me to keep chocolate from getting the best of me. I fear video games might have a similar effect on our friend Libby. Yep. There's nothing wrong with playing video games once in a while, but when they keep you from doing your homework or from helping your mom and dad around the house, they're keeping you from being the kid that God wants you to be. You might want to ask your parents for some help with ideas on how to avoid the temptation of that ever-present video controller, or chocolate, or whatever. Great idea, Alfred. Well, the extent of our scheduled period together has once again drawn to a close. That means that's all the time we have for today, kids. Thanks, Red Wonder. Just remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Goodbye! Hey, Red Wonder, let me show you how to do a theme song. Once I'm finished with them, I'll be the one in control. <laughs> Not so fast, Bad Apple! First Bumblyberg, then the world. It's apple picking time! An ordinary citizen by day Changing suits when danger comes our way Our vigilant defender and our friend Protecting us from villains to the end. Larry Boy. There's no hero quite like Larry Boy. Larry Boy. Rock on, Larry Boy. Alfred!
Alfred. Come in, Alfred. We've got to hurry. When trouble brings the city to its knees, everyone in Bombleyburg agrees. Light the signal, rise and sound the call. And Larry Boy will come and save us. trouble, I'll be there. Whenever a helpless vegetable calls out, I will answer. Evildoers, beware. You are no match for the awesome power of Larry Boy and his super suction ears. Telling me well, that monster looked like a chicken in a wig. Hey, do you remember what we saw the last time we were here? Yeah. Hey, kids, could you spare a nickel? We're not supposed to talk to strangers, and no, I. I don't have any extra money. Oh, really? Well, how about a dollar and 28 cents? What? How do 
did you know I had that? I've been watching you, kid. Every Monday morning, your mom gives you a dollar and 28 cents. And I want it. But, but that's my milk money. <laughs> See you later, boys. I hope you like water with your lunches. <laughs> huh? I believe you have something that belongs to those boys. Well, I, uh, I, I, uh... Who are you? I'm Larry Boy. of milk money. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Bumblyberg should be proud. Next time, though, try to remember to release the criminal from your super suction ear, turn your head left, and snap your neck down. Ah, yes. That's why I couldn't get rid of him. But besides that, I was super! Oops. What? What happened? Uh, nothing. That's exactly what Harold told me. Yeah, but guess what I heard about Ethel. Uh-huh, she goes to a salon for that. Did you hear something? Oh, well, I don't know. But anyway, did I tell you about Wanda's cousin? Yes. Hey, what do you say we go get some pizza? You know, to celebrate. tomorrow morning. Oh, all right. Good night, Alfred. Good night, Master Laddie. If any more space aliens want to fall into Bumbleyburg, I'm ready for you, too.
chafing dish, then sent the chef out to get another jar of pickled herring. And the dinner party was saved. Well, thank you, Mr. Alfred. Wasn't that a great story, kids? Well, we've still got more to do today. Mr. Alfred, would you like to stay and watch? Oh, that sounds like fun, but I'm a bit winded from my storytelling, so I think I'd better go home and recharge my batteries. Well, okay. Let's all thank Mr. Alfred for coming today. Thank you, Mr. Alfred. Remember, tomorrow we're gonna learn about rumors, little stories that can hurt. Did you hear what Mr. Alfred said? Yeah. He said he had to go home and recharge his batteries. Why would he say that? I don't know. I've got a toy with rechargeable batteries. It's my robot. Do you think Mr. Alfred is a... I don't know. He talks kind of funny, and he's kind of stiff. Kind of like my... robot! Should we tell anybody? No, we better keep it to ourselves. Keep what to yourselves? Who said that? Hey, over here! The weed! Keep what to yourselves? You're a talking weed! I'm a talking weed, you're a talking carrot. Your point was. So come on, tell me what it is you're keeping to yourselves. It's about Mr. Alfred, but we can't tell you anymore. Listen, Sprout, did your parents ever teach you to share? Well, yes, but... Then share with me. I'm a good friend of Albert's. Alfred. Alfred, I ask because I care. We learned something about Mr. Alfred today. Yeah? What is it? Well, we think Mr. Alfred... Yeah? ...is a robot. No. He looks so natural. He's a good robot. You won't tell anybody, will you? Hey, I'm not like you guys. I got roots. I'm not going anywhere. Your secret stays right here. about Mr. Alfred. What? Mr. Alfred, the guy who came to your class today. Yeah? He's a robot! <gasps> Aren't robots dangerous? I don't know. Did you hear that? Yes, I think I did. So then, Alfred is a dangerous robot. <gasps> oh, my! Whoa, thanks for the tip. Did you hear about Alfred? What? A weed in my yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you hear about Alfred? What about Alfred? It turns out he's really a dangerous robot. Alfred? Uh-huh. Everybody's talking about it. You don't say. Hey, I just read a book where dangerous robots took over the world. <gasps> Do you think Alfred? He is on the library board. <gasps> Today, the library. Tomorrow, the world. Nothing lifts the spirit more than an afternoon dabbling in the horticultural arts. I couldn't agree more, Alfred. Oh, sweet, sweet Petunia, may your bloom be a beacon of hope for all who tread these grassy hills. I'll get it. Hey, you're a weed. That's right, but did you hear about Alfred? Oh, Alfred's gonna be mad. 
He hates weeds in his flower bed. Yeah, but did you hear about Alfred? You better get out of here before Alfred comes back. You're not listening to me. Did you hear? Master Letty, uh, it's the mayor. She says it's urgent. I'll be right there. I gotta go. Hold that thought. Alfred, there's a huge weed in your flower bed. I told it to leave. Oh, dear. Well, wait till you hear what the mayor has to say. Hello, Mayor. This is Larry. Yes. Hello, Larry. Listen, I need you to get Larry Boy. Uh, yeah, sure, but uh, why didn't you call him with the Larry signal? Because it's daytime. You can't see it in the daytime. Good point. Alfred, make a note of that. Tell him we need his help. There are weeds, terrible weeds, popping up all over Bumbleyberg. They are saying very strange things about your friend Alfred. I don't believe them, but some of our citizens are getting worried. What's worse, though? They are ruining the lawns and gardens of our fair city. Larry, if Larry Boy cannot stop them, our property values will plummet. Our homes will be worth nothing. Can you find him? Don't worry about a thing, Mayor. Help is on the way. Alfred, we've got some gardening to do. Have you heard the one about Alfred? A dangerous robot, I'm told. He's got lasers for eyes and the microchip brain. His skin is terribly cold. We've heard the one about Alfred. It's strange. Amazing. That's true. But now that we've heard about Alfred, we'd like to hear more about you. What? I'm a rumor weed. I'm a rumor weed. A tiny little story is all I need. To make a big mess, I'm a rumor weed. Plan A. Uh, good luck, Master Letty. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try Plan B. All right, trying Plan B. So what is a rumor? It starts as a story. Maybe it's true. Maybe not. But once you repeat it, it's hard to defeat it. Now look at the mess that you've got. Uh -huh. Yeah, Alfred's a robot. Everyone knows the story is all over town. We rumor weeds know how a rumor can grow. Like a big weed in the ground. I'm a rumor weed. Yes, it's true. I'm a rumor weed. Okay, I'm executing plan B. Uh, yes, plan B. <laughs> Alfred, I think we have a problem. Yes, what's that? I can't stop this thing. Oh, dear. Uh, Larry boy, put your super suction ear down by the weed. What? Why? I've installed sensors in your plungers that will tell us about the weed's genetic structure. Oh, my. Well, here goes. Hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Alfred, is it working? Yes, yes, perfect. All right, that's enough, Master Letty. You can come back to the Letty Cave now. Um, I'd love to, Alfred, but it got me by the ear. What? You're a big, strong superhero. Surely you can get away from a little weed. Uh, yeah, you'd think so, but it's kind of strong. I'm a rumor weed. Yes, it's true. I'm a rumor weed. Oh, I need. You better watch out for the rumor.
work, Master Larry. The data is fascinating. Have you figured out how to stop it? Well, not yet, but it's extraordinary. It's like no plant I've ever seen. It doesn't photosynthesize. Why do we care if it takes pictures? No, no, photosynthesize. Plants turn sunlight into energy. It's how they grow, except these weeds don't do that. They don't need energy to grow? Oh, no, they need lots of energy, but they don't get it from sunlight. Well, where do they get it? I can't figure it out. They're feeding off something, but I don't know what. Look, I fed the data about the weed into the Letty satellite in geosynchronous orbit over Bumbleburg. Now, wherever a new weed grows, we can see it here. See? <gasps> Bumbleburg has the measles. Uh, no, those are the weeds. What? They're everywhere. Yes, and at the rate they're growing, if we can't find a way to stop them... Bumbleberg will be really weedy. Oh, it's worse than that. These weeds are strong enough to break up sidewalks, smash through brick walls. If we can't stop them, Bumbleberg will be... Destroyed. Uh, no, careful. That's the satellite. Oh, my goodness. What? Look, I had the satellite looking at the surface of Bumbleberg. See? Yeah. When you bumped the control, you told the satellite to look under the ground. Now watch. <gasps> They're all connected. Wow, what's that big green thing right under Bumbleberg? It could only be one thing. The mother weed. How do you kill a weed? <laughs> you go to the root! <laughs> You've got to take out the mother weed! Fortunately, I made some modifications to the Larry Mobile that will really come in handy! I don't know what to do! I don't know what to do! Don't worry! I've planned out the entire mission. I'll be right here giving you instructions as you need them. Remember! Bumbleberg is counting on you! You can do it! I hope. Are you up to speed? Yes, I am! All right, press the yellow button. Okay. This is great, but, um, I thought the weed was under the ground. Yes, that's right. Uh, now you're almost there. Steady, steady, and uh, now push the red button. Huh? Okay. Hey, my wing! I need those! Not where you're going, you don't. What? Alfred, are you in? machine. Oh, I see. Now, I've set coordinates to take you to the sewer system about 50 feet from the weed. Once you break through the tunnel wall, I'll give you more directions. Roger. I'm slowing you down now so you don't hit the wall too hard. Master Larry! 
Are you in the tunnel? Uh, Master Larry! All right, Alfred, I'm in the tunnel. Alfred! M Master Larry, can you hear me? Alfred, can you hear me? <gasps> the radio isn't working. The sewer walls must be blocking the transmission. That means I can't give him his... Direction! What do I do? What do I do? What to do? What to do? I must save him! Alfred! I'm coming, Master Larry! Okay, I can do this. I am, after all, a superhero. Oh look, it's just the little one. What was I so nervous about? You've met your match, Weed. I'm gonna take you, and I'm gonna... Boy is battling a giant weed in the sewer system. Ah! The robot! <laughs> Come on, Alfred. What'd you give me? How's your ear? Huh? How'd you know about that? That's right. You're connected. <gasps> ah. Oh, Alfred. I knew you wouldn't let me down. So, did you hear the one about Alfred? <laughs> Hasta la vista, weedy. Wrong button. Everyone, listen to me! Ah, oh, Mayor! Larry Boy needs our help! He's... Look, Mayor! It's like I told you! He's got a shiny metal head, just like a robot! Your light! Stand back, evil robot! Oh, no! That's my helmet! It keeps my brain safe! Your robot brain! No! What? No! Don't look at his eyes! They're laser beams! No! Wait! I'm not a robot! I'm British! I'm warning you! I'm a super... <laughs> Hero? It. You can't stop this weed. Thanks to your friends up there. I'm getting bigger by the minute. <laughs> so, did you hear the one about Alfred? What? I heard he wants to take over the world.
going on? What's that thing that has Alfred? It's a big weed, Dad! Didn't you hear? Mr. Alfred is really a dangerous robot with laser eyes! What? Who said that? It's true! He's gonna take over the world! Now where did you hear that? The weed told me! Yeah, isn't that right? Did you make up this story? What? I'm a rumor weed. I never make anything up. I heard it from two very reliable sources. Right, kids? Junior? Laura? Do you have something to tell me? Oh. Well, we heard Mr. Alfred tell you that he needed to recharge his batteries. So we thought he must be a robot, right? Oh, kids, that was a figure of speech. A what? Sometimes grown-ups say things that really mean something else. When Mr. Alfred said he needed to recharge his batteries, he really meant that he was tired and needed to go home and rest. That's all. Oh. Listen, if you hear something about someone that sounds bad or even just weird, you should ask them about it or ask your mom or dad. But don't spread rumors. Even if it's true, God doesn't want us to tell stories that can hurt. He wants us to spread nice words. So Mr. Alfred isn't a robot. No. Mr. Alfred is a very nice man. Did you see that? Yeah. Do you think? We can save Mr. Alfred by spreading some nice words. Come on! Hey! Mr. Alfred is a nice man! What? The scary robot? He's not a robot. He's a nice man who came to our class to tell us stories. Well, I remember when Alfred helped me out with my dinner party. A scary robot wouldn't do that. He helped me change the tire. He carried my groceries for me. He helped us with our bake sale. What a nice man. ask you if it was true. Oh, I forgive you. I forgive you all. Ah, uh, has anyone seen Letty Boy? told me you were a robot. Shh. Is there a flower show? <laughs> hey there, citizen. We really had an adventure today, didn't we? That was a thorny one. I mean, once that problem got going, it just spread like a... Uh, Master Larry, enough with the puns. Can we please get on with this? Uh, sorry. We're back at the Larry Cave to wrap this one up and send you home. Alfred, do you suppose the Bible has anything to say about what happened today? As a matter of fact, it does. It's coming up on the screen right now. Here, take a look at this. Reckless words pierce like a sword. 
but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Proverbs 12, 18. Hmm. So the Bible says, if you're not careful, your words can hurt people, just like a sword. Oh, is that right? Junior and Laura didn't mean to hurt Alfred, but they weren't careful with what they said and who they said it to, and it caused big problems. But that verse also says that if we use nice words, we can make it all better. We can make people feel good. Remember, God doesn't want us to tell stories that can hurt. He wants us to spread nice words. And if you can do that, you'll be that hero too. See you next time. Ta-da! Dangerous robot, I'm told He's got lasers for eyes and a microchip brain And his skin is terribly cold We've heard the one about Alfred It's great, amazing, I'm true But now that we've heard about Alfred I'm a rumor we A tiny little story is all I need It's true, maybe not. But once you repeat it, it's hard to defeat it. Now look at the mess that you've got. Alfred's a robot, everyone knows. Story is all over town. Us rumor we know how a rumor can grow. Just like a big weed in the ground. I'm a rumor weed. I'm a rumor weed. A tiny little story is all I need. Big, big mess. A tiny loose, a tiny loose story is all I need. Tomatoes. If a squash can make you smile, if you like to waltz with potatoes, up and down the produce aisle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have we got a show for you? Veggie tales, veggie tales, veggie tales, veggie tales. Kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. That's right. So, who's got a question? 
Oh, hey, I just remembered. I got an email from a kid named Ezio Vieri in Hackensack, New Jersey. You got a what? You know, Bob. Email. Aren't you wired? Online? Surfing the web? HTML, good buddy. Oh, uh, I got cable last month. You are so early 90s. Anyway, Ezio said he just did something that he knew he wasn't supposed to do. Now his friends are telling him to lie about it so he won't get in trouble. What should he do? Ooh, a lie can be a very dangerous thing. Do we have any stories about that? Bob, I'm all over it. Huh? The same thing happened to Junior Asparagus once. It did? I don't remember. Ezio, grab your popcorn, turn down the lights, and get ready for Larry Boy and the Fib from Outer Space. Roll film. Huh? Larry? Oh, it sure was. I especially like the part where the space aliens sucked all those cows up into their spaceship and then switched brains with the cows so they could come back to Earth and infiltrate our society unnoticed. Yeah, yeah that, that, was, that was great. What do you suppose that is? I'm bored, Jerry. B-O-R-D, bored. Why did we want to work at the Bumbleberg Science Lab? Because we wanted to see space aliens. And what have we seen in two long years? Huh? Nothing. Nothing. N-U-T. You know, nothing. Jimmy? Watch the screen, they said. Keep your eyes on the screen. So we watched the screen for two years. And what do we see? Nothing. Jimmy? And then there's the light. If this light ever flashes, something from space is about to hit Bumbleberg. Alert Larry Boy immediately. Jimmy? Like that'll ever happen. I'm telling you, Jerry, this is the most boring job on Earth. Maybe we could get our old jobs back at Mr. Slushy. What? Master Larry? Yes, Alfred. Uh, uh. No time now, Alfred. Duty call. I'm fallen and I can't get up. The tea party is almost ready. We just need one more plate for Mr. Snuggly. Hmm, another plate. I know just where to get one. Where? Up there. Um, that looks like a very special plate. Maybe we could find another one. Oh, it is a special plate. My dad says, that's Art Bugatti, the greatest bowler that ever rolled a ball. Only 200 plates made. It's collectible. Let's just find another plate. Mr. Snuggly is a very special bear. He deserves a special plate. I'm sure my dad won't mind. <laughs> Remember? 
remembered. I was supposed to wash my, um... I have to take out the, um... I gotta go. Psst! Hey, kid! Looks like you got a problem. Huh? Who said that? If you're interested, I think I can help. Mr. Snuggly, you can talk? Well, I've never been called Mr. Snuggly before, but of course I can talk. Actually, the name is Fibrilius Minimus, but you can call me Fib. You must be new to the neighborhood. You could say that, but more importantly, I'm here to help you out. I couldn't help but notice you broke the plate. Yeah, I... And I imagine your father's not gonna be thrilled. Well, yeah. Now listen closely. What you need is a story. You mean like a bedtime story? No, 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 no. Now try to keep up here, kid. You need to make up a story about how somebody else broke the plate. You mean you want me to lie? Oh, no, 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 no. Not a lie. What we are talking about here is just a little fib. People do it all the time, trust me. A little fib couldn't hurt anybody. I'm home. Well, it's up to you, kid. Break a leg. Hi, Junior. How was your day today? My plate! My Art Bugatti Limited Edition Collector's Plate! What happened to it? Well... It's Laura's fault. She broke the plate. I tried to stop her. She said she had to demonstrate her apple chopper. The apple chopper worked just great, but chopped right through your bowling plate. It's Laura's fault. She broke the plate. It's true. And that's the tale I have to tell to you. Oh, my. If that's what you say happened, then, well, I trust you, Junior. But I'm very surprised at Laura. I'm going to have to call her father right away. You did it! Good work, kid! Huh? Have you grown? Oh, no, no. I've always been this size. But you! You were magnificent! I don't know. What about Laura? Oh, she'll be fine. Remember, a little fib couldn't hurt anybody. And besides, it's over. You're free. You're right. I don't have to worry about that plane anymore. I'm free. You betcha. I feel great. You were right. A little fib can't hurt anybody. <laughs> That's my boy. Come on, kid. Let's go have some more fun. All righty. I'm with you all the way, Fib. <laughs> Laddie boy. Hello, Master Laddie. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Alfred. Go ahead. Yes. Um, have you located the foreign object? I'm afraid not. The Larry Mobile and I have been all over Bumbleburg, and we haven't seen anything that looks like it came from outer space. Nothing at all? Well, we did see a kid with green hair. Oh, and a dog that could whistle. Oh, all right. Well, keep looking, Master Larry. Remember, the security of Bumbleburg rests in your uh, plungers. Have no fear, Alfred. If there's a space alien in this town, Larry Boy will bring him in. Hello, boy. Hey, Junior. Uh, I'll be right back. Hi, Percy. Junior, I just came from Laura's house, and she got in trouble for breaking your dad's bowling plate. Except she says she didn't break it. She says you did. Who's telling the truth? Oh, well, actually, she's right. Huh? Laura didn't break the plate. It was, it was Lenny. Her brother? Yep, that's right. Lenny broke the plate. I'll tell you the whole story. It's Lenny's fault he broke the plate. He's very naughty. Just how was I to know he hated Art Bugatti? He gave it to a crocodile who chewed it up for quite a while. It's Lenny's fault he broke the plate, it's true. And that's the tale I have to tell to you. Whoa, gee, 
I didn't think Lenny was capable of that kind of violence. He seemed like such a nice kid. I didn't even know he had a crocodile. This is great. It worked again, Feb. Feb, you are growing. Growing? Oh, no, no. Well, maybe I put on a few pounds, but Junior, I will always be your little Fib. You've got legs. Yes, I do. But enough about me. Junior, you were marvelous. What a story. I'm telling you, kid, you've got the gift. Really? Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. You've got what it takes. What do you mean you can't find it? I'm telling you, Alfred, I've looked everywhere. It's just not here. Master Larry, I've gone all over the data from the science lab, and I have to agree with their conclusions. Something from outer space landed in Bumbleyburg. It simply has to be around there somewhere. Look, Alfred, I've been driving around all day. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I've got to go to the bathroom. This suit is very constricting. I'm coming home now. But the security of Bumbleyburg rests in you. There are no space aliens in Bumbleyburg. There he is! Hi, guys. Uh, if you need me, I'll be over here. Huh? No, no, that's not what I said at all. You didn't break the plate, and you didn't break the plate. No, it was these space aliens. They came down and they grabbed these cows and they switched brains on the cows. And the cows with the brains of the space aliens broke the plate. Funny, I just saw that same thing happen in a movie. Invasion of the Cow Snatchers. You did? That's another lie! Nothing but a pig! Hi, Junior. What are you doing? Don't worry, Junior. A little fib couldn't hide anybody, right? <laughs> Help! It's got me! I can't get free! <laughs> Swamp. I've been here for 38 turns. Your turn, Alfred. Yes, let's see. Oh, look! I get to go all the way to Princess Lolly! What luck! Ha! Huh. Your turn! Still stuck. I sure hope the rest of Bumbleyburg is having a better day than I am. <laughs> Alfred. I've got work to do. Consider our game postponed. Why are you doing this to me? I thought you were my friend. That's the thing about fibs, Julia. We grow. Now that I'm big, it's my turn to call the shots. And you belong to me! Not so fast, monster! Huh? If any 
anyone can stop that fib, Larry Boy can. Drop the asparagus! Why don't you come and make me, little purple man? If that's the way it's gotta be! Larry, what's happening? The monster is headed toward the Bumbleberg Water Tower. He is carrying a small asparagus. Alfred, we must find a way to stop this beast! Yes, I'll get the computer working on it right away. Can you get to the water tower? The road is blocked. I'm afraid I'll have to go on foot. Well, I've made a few modifications to the Larry Mobile that might just do the trick. You have? Well, you know, I like to tinker in my spare time. Is that what all these new buttons are for? That's right. Unfortunately, I haven't had time to label them. Oh, dear. But if you do exactly what I say, everything should work out fine. I think. Let's see if your little Pipo friend can help you up here. <laughs> Somebody should go wake him up. Now, once you get up to speed, all you have to do is press the green button. No, no, the blue button. Alfred, I'm going to run out of road. Which button is it? The blue button. Press the blue button. White bird. The green button. It's the green one. It's part of the plan. I am going to die! Stop yelling at me! Stop yelling! Yell, yell! Yellow! Well, in the name of Fergus McDonaldson. So this is what you do in your spare time. Well, not all of it. I also dabble in biochemistry, nuclear medicine, you know, this and that. So how do we stop this thing? Oh, yes, that. Uh, let's see here. Ah, we know what the monster is now. What is it? It's a lie. What's a lie? It is. Which part? The whole thing. It's a lie. The monster is a lie. Oh, my. Well, how do I stop it? Um, I'm afraid we don't know that yet. Trap. Oh, I don't think you should look, man. It's not a pretty sight. Now would be a good time for you to tell me how I can stop this fly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, here comes the answer now. Um, according to my calculations, you can do nothing. Nothing? Yes, nothing. Why didn't you tell me that before I jumped out his head? Well, my calculations were not yet finished. Even a little lie can get really big really fast, and a big lie can just swallow you up 
and Junior, you made a really big lie! <laughs> Alfred, we've been over this. No, 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 listen. You cannot stop the lie, but someone else can. What? Who? I don't know yet. The computer is working on it right now. Now, which one of you guys should I eat first? Alfred, we have no time. It's faking. Hmm. You sort of look like candy. No, really. It's fake. Wait, better. Alfred! I'm getting a reading! Alfred! It looks like... It looks like... Ah! Ah! Alfred! What's happening? Ah! Boot, you transistor! problem I know I can handle. Dad, I'm really sorry about your plate. Oh, Junior, I'm sure it was an accident. I just wish you would have told me right away. I thought you'd be really mad at me. Junior, you're much more important to me than any old bowling plate. I guess I should be punished, huh? I think what you've been through today was punishment enough. What do you think, Dad? I think you're right. Let's just make sure that from now on we get the true story the first time. Oh, doesn't it just warm your heart? And it's all because of one man, one plunger-headed hero always ready when Bumblebird needs him. Larry boy? Hop, there he goes again. That was really something. You did a great job, Larry. Boy. Thank you, Bob. Um, we need to hurry this along. I have a meeting with the action figure people in 10 minutes. Action figures? Yes, Bob. Larry Boy Mania is sweeping the nation. If you're not on board, you're gonna miss the train. I, uh, I had no idea. Now you do. Yes, well, we're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we've learned today. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. God has a lot to say in his book. I like that song. Let it play. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. Now that our song is done, we'll take a look. Well, Junior thought the best way to get out of trouble was by telling a lie. Yep, but to cover up for the first lie, he had to tell more and more lies until finally he was trapped. A slave to his lies. 
That's right. He thought a lie would set him free. But in the end, the only way for him to get free was by telling the truth. Let's see if QWERTY has a verse for us. The truth will set you free. John 8, 32b. You see, Ezio, the only way for us to really be free is by doing what God wants us to do. And God wants us to always tell the truth. I'm not saying that you won't get punished for what you did, but as Junior learned, facing your parents can be a lot less painful than getting stuck in a big lie. Oh, is that right? Well, we got to clear the stage now, Bob. It's time for the world premiere of my new music video. Y you're what? You're joking, right? He's not joking. Larry, we got to talk. Alfred, I've got work to do. Consider our game postponed.
Oh, Larry boy, we need you now to show the way to save the day to save the town. Now from the cave, the tires squeal, and to the rescue comes a cucumber of steel. Oh, Larry boy, oh, yeah. we need you here. Oh, yeah. So won't you come and lend a super suction in here? Oh, Larry boy, oh, yeah. the dynamite. Oh, yeah. Fighting what is wrong, standing up for what is right. Cause what the world needs now is a hero One who's kind and true and brave and bold If you haven't guessed yet, then it's time you know Cause what the world needs now is a hero One who's kind and true and brave and bold If you haven't guessed yet, then it's time you know A beautiful day in the city of Bumbleburg. A perfect day for rest and relaxation. Or is it? Ah, it's a cheese-breathing cow dragon! Ah! Oh no! What we need is a hero of some sort. Cease your cheesy assault on the good citizens of Bumbleburg. Archie! I've been teased! Uh, don't worry, ladyboy. Just activate the radar-guided spatula on your utility belt. Wow! I never thought I'd need a radar-guided spatula. <laughs> All right, cow dragon. Show me your worst. Move! <laughs> Herbert and Wally, how could you? Well, we were really hungry. Well, why don't you just eat the cheese instead of shooting it at people? Oh, man. We should have thought of that. Thanks for your help, Larry boy. Glad to be of service. And remember, God wants us to be nice to people. So, once again, Larry Boy has saved the day! But what's this? A secret hidden camera? Could it be that these proceedings were being observed by some villainous proprietor of badness? Just you wait, Larry Boy. Soon I will rule Bumbleburg. Me, Awful Alvin! <laughs> And my dastardly henchman, Lampy! <laughs> now we shall do the villainous dance of villainy to signify the imminent performance of our villainous duties. Dance with me, Lampy! Later that day, the staff of the Daily Bumble meets in editor Bob the Tomato's office to discuss the headline for tomorrow's paper. I, I think the lead story should be Larry Boy defeating the Cow Dragon. Yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know, Vicky. We've put Larry Boy on the front page a lot lately. Does anyone have any other ideas? I got one. It's about a local inventor and her new invention. Wow! What does it do? Why, honey, the Knitmaster 3000 is a wonder. It recycles the hair that collects in your bathtub drain. Ew. Ooh. Ta-da! A freshly knitted nightcap! 
Junior, we can't put this on the front page. Why not? Because most of the citizens of Bumbleburg never get any hair in their drains. Because most of them don't have any hair. Besides, it's kind of icky. Okay, we'll go with the Larry Boy story. Yay! Larry, get back to your cleaning. I don't know what it is about that Larry Boy, but he really reminds me of someone. I just can't figure out who. What's that beeping? Nothing. Um, I just remembered. I gotta go janitorize something. This is Larry. Come in, Archie. Uh, greetings, Master Laddie. Archie, I'm tired of being a janitor. I'm a millionaire superhero, for Pete's sake. Master Laddie, we've been over this. Working at the Daily Bumble helps keep your finger on the pulse of Bumbleberg. Well, yeah, but why janitor? Well, it was the only job you were qualified for. Oh. That's the spirit. Now, I call to remind you that tonight is the night of your superhero class at the Bumbleberg Community College. You don't want to be late again. Oh, you're right. I better get going. You know, you could take the secret pneumatic leddy tube to the leddy cave. No, no, I mean, that's okay. A nice walk would do me some good. Well, sure he doesn't fix it, young man. I can have my butler. Um, this guy I know can fix it. He's really good at fixing stuff. He'll fix it good as new. Darling, let me tell you something. There better not be a scratch on it, or else. Looks like I'm gonna be late for superhero class again. Now, Lampy, it is time to exact my awful plan on Larry Boy and his precious bumbly bug. <laughs> You're not laughing. Perhaps this is because you do not fully understand my awful plan. Watch, and I will show you with my angry eyebrows. If someone holds on to their anger, Refusing to let go of it, my eyebrows can attach to their forehead. And once they do, that someone will be doomed to hold on to their anger forever! <laughs> Fly, my bushy minions! Fly and seek out anger! <laughs> By the time Larry took the Knitmaster to Archibald for repairs, he was running very late for Bok Choi's superhero class. Superheroes should not hold on to their anger. Sorry. Larry boy, this is the fourth time you've been late. But as you can see, I'm letting go of my anger. Take your seat, please. I'm Larry Boy, from Bumbleburg. I'm in the Scarlet Tomato, from a Pugsleyville. The Scarlet Tomato? Isn't that, um, redundant? What do you mean? Well, Scarlet, Tomato, Red, Tomato. Most tomatoes are red. It's redundant. Now the Green Hornet, that works. You see, cause, well, most hornets aren't green. I am not a hornet. Once I was captured by the ninja gang, and they were going to spritz me with a light olive oil dressing. Not my favorite. Did I hold on to my anger? No. Uh, got any superpowers? Oh, yeah. I got a, I got a two great ones. I can fly, and uh, I can uh, defy gravity. Isn't that redundant? What? Any questions? But, Buck! Sometimes Electro Melon gets real angry. We all do. 
It is not wrong to get angry, Electromelon, but you should not hold on to your anger. You have to let it go. But Electromelon become Electromelon when angry. <sighs> no, Electromelon must let go of his anger. Okay. Electromelon, try what Bok Choy says. <sighs> Thanks. Hog time! This guideline is in section 49, chapter 4, line 26 of the Superhero Handbook. It is written, Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Be warned, young ones. If you hold on to your anger, your anger will hold on to you. The next morning is a beautiful new day in Bumbleburg. But some of the citizens don't even notice, for they've spent the night stewing in their anger. Oh, what a frightful night. I couldn't stop thinking about that crazy cucumber that broke my invention. Here, Lampy, you want to look? Bob, I just got a hot tip. My sources say people are committing random acts of angriness all over the city. <gasps> oh, no, that's terrible. Unless you're an editor that needs a good front page story. Oh, Larry, what's that thing doing back here? Oh, well, I had it fixed, so I need to call Mom Mushroom and have her come pick it up. Well, you can't keep it here. It's in the way. Oh, we've got work to do. Ah, oh, peanut brittle. Lampy, come on. This should be safe here. No one ever comes up here. Oh, hi, Lampy. Lampy. That must mean I gotta talk to Archibald. And according to my source, everyone committing these acts of angriness has big, black, angry eyebrows. You mean, like those? <laughs> Where is that cucumber janitor? Oh, there he is. Destroying my knit master? No, wait, it's all fixed. Wait, help! Help! Where'd that cucumber go? He went in there. Hey! You let me out of here before I start getting angry! This eyebrow thing is worse than I thought. There's that beeping again. It's driving me nuts. Um, that's my tea in the microwave. I get it. Master Larry! Bumblebug needs Larry Boy's help. Citizens all over town are hanging on to their anger. And as we both know, God wants us to let go of our anger. I heard. And I have something else to tell you. I saw a Lampy. Lampy? You mean awful Alvin's sidekick? Oh, then Alvin must be behind all those angry eyebrows. All right, I'll hop back to the mansion and change to Larry Boy. There's no time. You have to use the secret pneumatic Larry tube. Oh, all right. I do
do this because I am that hero! It seems that the eyebrows are what's making everyone mad. So I've added a new anti-eyebrow attachment to your utility belt. I really hate that tube. And so Larry Boy rushed to try and remove the eyebrows that were causing all the anger. Citizens of Bumbleberg, I've come to remove your angry eyebrows. Who wants to go first? Leave us alone while Bessie's being angry. This will only take a sec. Okay, I wanted to do this the easy way, but I can see I'm going to have to play rough. Anti-eyebrow stingy, activate. You incompetent cucumber! Awful Alvin. And Lampy! Hi, Lampy! Don't speak all friendly like to Lampy. He's devoted only to me and despises all friendliness. You'll never remove my angry eyebrows with your useless gadgets. As long as the citizens of Bumbleburg hold on to their anger, my angry eyebrows stay put! <laughs> you are finished, Larry boy! I'm not scared of you. I'm scared of that, though. I will stick my angry eyebrows to you, just like everyone else. And you, too, will be stuck to your anger. But I'm not holding on to anger. Oh, really? Not even a little? Nope. Well, uh, would you hold on to your anger if I stuffed this popsicle down the back of your super suit? Oh! Oh! Woohoo! That's cold! Oh, would you hold on to your anger if I blew this trumpet in your ear? Well, that was pretty annoying, but I'll let the anger go. Or what if I had my angry eyebrows fill your Larry Mobile with chocolate syrup? Hey, that's gonna ruin the leather. Oh, I don't know if I'll ever let that one go. <laughs> now I have defeated even Larry Boy. My revenge is complete. Larry Boy held captive by his own anger. Huh? If you hold on to your anger, your anger will hold on to you. God wants us to let go of our anger. Must let go of anger. I Waffle yeah. Alvin, sometimes you do really bad things that make me really, really mad. But if I hold on to my anger, it'll only make me do things that I know I shouldn't do. So, I'm not gonna stay mad at you. What? You, you can't do that. Hey, look what Larry Boy did. He let go of his anger, and look how happy he looks. Larry Boy's right. I wouldn't be squirting mustard on Bob if I weren't holding on to my anger. Yeah, but sure I get mad sometimes, but I need to learn to let it go. Oh, good show, Master Laddie. I've been following your progress. Looks like you've been defeated by the forces of good once again, Awful Alvin. You may have ruined my awful plan, but I can still command my angry eyebrows to destroy Larry Boy! What? Hey, I'm Larry Boy. 
Attack, my precious eyebrows! Attack, Larry Boy! Okay, angry eyebrows. Come and get me. Larry Boy, what are you doing? Don't worry, Archibald. I have a plan. You? Toro, Toro! Ole! Toro, ole! Enough of this foolish fooling around. Finish him off, my furious furry f uh, eyebrows! Toro, Toro! My beautiful eyebrow! Larry boy, you did this! I know. I'll get you for this. I'll always be angry about this one! No! Not me! Not me! <laughs> hmm. The nightcap must still be attracted to anger. And so, with Awful Alvin defeated by Bumbleberg's own Larry Boy, the citizens have been released from their angry eyebrows. Well, all but one. You're Larry Alvin! Couldn't we just leave her in there? I am so angry. When I get through with you, you're gonna wish you never I had your invention fixed, just like I promised. You did? Yeah, but you still broke it, so I'm gonna... We're going! What's this? It's a medal. The mayor awarded you this medal for inventing the Knitmaster 3000. Which helped Larry Boy save the city. You're a hero! A hero? My little old me? A hero. Once again, everything in Bumbleburg returned to normal, thanks to the Cucumber of Steel! That's me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Peanut brittle. 